Hello and welcome to Tech Talk. At the start of every single Formula One season, when all the new cars are launched by their teams or sometimes put out just in the form of photographs, I keep a little set of notes about all of my observations and little details that have caught my eye on every single car. Sometimes I put those notes out on social media to see what other people think, try and get their comments and sort of harvest them and see what other opinions are about different design features of individual cars. But every now and again, a launch comes along or a car comes along that's a little bit hard with the notes in that you can't really understand what the car's about when you first look at it. One of the reasons for that is sometimes the teams like to hide some components, some details of the car. And I'm not talking about the nonsense renderings that some teams have got into a habit of putting out pre-season. No, I'm talking about when you actually see real photographs of the car. And one car this season, above all others, really did mystify me. I'm talking, of course, of the McLaren. McLaren's new car was launched at the team's Woking factory quite early in the season and they put out a whole selection of photos of the car. But it was more interesting to see what the photos didn't show than what they did and it made it a very difficult car to get your head around at first glance. Of course we've now had two Grand Prix and we're just going into the third race of the season in Melbourne and that means we've had a plenty of good time to look over that car and to understand a few details about it. Well, McLaren are an interesting case in point because they were an early adopter of what we now call the Red Bull concept, the concept that the world champions used on the RB18 and the RB19 last season. And that's a really distinctive concept. And you can see that on the new McLaren. You can see the very distinctive short nose here, quite wide, picking up on the second element of the front wing. And that's very much Red Bull RB18, Red Bull RB19 style. I wouldn't say it was inspired by the Red Bull because McLaren kind of came up with the same car concept as Red Bull did at the same time. But last year's McLaren, it wasn't a great success to start off with, was it? I mean, when the car came out, it was a bit of a disaster and it wasn't until the season got underway that the development started coming through and the car really started to move forwards. And that happened after the team had parted company with its technical director and had gone through a little bit of pain early in the season. But as the car developed through the year, it became a really competitive package. In fact, it was one of only two designs to beat the Red Bull RB19. The other, of course, being the Ferrari, which won the Singapore Grand Prix. Well, McLaren also won a race. It wasn't a Grand Prix, it was a sprint, and it was won by the Australian driver, Oscar Piastri. And as we're racing at Melbourne this weekend, I thought, what better time than to take a detailed look at the new McLaren for the 2024 season and try to uncover some of those secrets that the team were trying to keep secret at the launch of the car. And we can certainly do that when we take a look at the car here in pre-season testing. And you can see immediately some of that Red Bull concept carrying through. And I call it a Red Bull concept. I think it would be fair to call it a Red Bull McLaren style concept. Here you can see that short nose again that I mentioned before. But you can see that ever distinctive pull rod front suspension layout with that very distinctive V shape at the front of the car. And of course they've got push rods at the rear and that's a, that's a, a concept that more and more teams are migrating to and away from those push rod front suspension ends. Look at the uh, Sauber, for example. They've gone now down this car concept route, which is a major challenge for a team to switch. McLaren then are a little bit ahead of the rest of the field on this. And if you want to know a little bit more about the advantages and disadvantages of push rod versus pull rod, well, Craig Scarborough is going to take a deep look at that a little bit later on F1 TV. The new car, though, has a lot more to talk about. One of the key elements that the team wanted to keep hidden at the start of the season and at that car launch, you can see quite clearly here, it's this uh, little winglet that sits underneath the mirror. It's probably a mirror support. And I think it's very clearly inspired by the Mercedes designs that we saw in 2022 and to a lesser extent in 2023, where you had the upper side impact structure housing a little bit of a aerodynamic winglet, if you like to call it that, and with some sticky uppy bits on it, and then supporting the mirror. That was its main function. Well, McLaren have sort of taken that a next step because this section here doesn't house the upper side impact structure. It's purely for aerodynamic purposes. And that's something that the team wanted to keep hidden at the launch. Of course, we spotted it pretty quickly because they managed to put it in just one photo 
and it was pretty quick, quickly revealed. But as we drive through the corner, you can see a few more elements of the McLaren design and where they differ from that Red Bull concept. And you can see it very clearly again here on the side pod ducts. Remember in uh, last season, you had that very distinctive Red Bull style protruding lower entry point to the side pod duct. Well, they've got rid of that for 2024 and it's a, it does protrude still slightly, but not nearly as much. Red Bull, of course, have gone completely the opposite direction. They've got that, some people call it the overbite, that upper section that's a completely different concept and a bit more like the Mercedes design that didn't work last year. Red Bull have made that work. But to take a slightly more detailed look at what McLaren have done with this car, and when we did get a proper look at it at the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix, well, our friend Mike Seymour had a good chat with Andrea Stella down on the pit lane to have a closer look at the real details of the car. I would say starting from the front, definitely there's been quite a lot of work in uh, uh, a new front suspension. That's been uh, an engineering challenge and I'm really pleased with the work that our engineering department have been able to do uh, in achieving this uh, pretty different design. And uh, I have to say that things worked as expected, which wasn't obvious, no, we, we shake down the car uh, with like, uh, let's see if we actually met uh, all our um, uh, targets and we did. So once again, well done to our engineering group. Um, quite a bit of work in the side pods, like in this area of the mirrors, you can see this, uh, uh, we've been able to introduce uh, a wing uh, to improve the aerodynamic behavior. Uh, definitely quite a lot of changes on the floor, most of which are not visible from the top. They are more uh, um, related to what is in between the underneath of the car and the ground. Uh, rear suspension as well has been revisited uh, quite considerably and once again uh, uh, has been an area of improvement for um, our performance and it worked definitely as expected and also rear wing geometrically in terms of its shape uh, is very different I, 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 we can see that all teams invested in uh, evolving the geometry of rear wings and definitely we found quite a bit of efficiency in, uh, in this area of the car. Something else the team wanted to keep a little bit covered up and they're a little bit cagey about even to now is the design of the front suspension. Here McLaren have made a really big departure and I'm not talking about the layout of the pull rod, I'm talking about the position of the steering rack in the car and the fact that the steering arms have been completely relocated. You can just about see it in this image but when you take a look from above and behind the car you can see it really clearly. The steering arm of the car has moved to the rear here, behind the rear leg of the lower wishbone. And as you can see, another ele element of the suspension, the push rod, sits ahead of the two, forming a sort of cascade of components running down the side of the car. Now that is absolutely all for aerodynamic reasons. All of the suspension layer, all of the suspension positioning is to do with the aerodynamic performance. However, there are some pretty important decisions the team has made to do this because by relocating the steering arm rearward to the rear portion of the suspension pickup points, the steering rack has moved rearwards as well. It's housed somewhere like that underneath the bodywork of the car, much further back than you'd expect. And that means when you take a look at the front bulkhead, it's missing a steering rack. Where you'd normally expect to see the steering rack at the front of the car, there's absolutely nothing there, just the linkage between the forward elements of the lower wishbone. That's not what you expect to see. Normally you would see the steering rack sitting in this location. It's not there at all. In fact, what the team have had to do is relocate that steering rack further back on the car. And in this shot, you can see where it would sit. This is the front of the car going this way, and this is the rear of the car coming back. And the steering rack is gonna be located in here somewhere. Now that's quite low on the front of the car, and also very deep underneath the front of the cockpit. And that uh, could be a little bit of a difficult challenge in terms of housing the steering column. So if you think that steering rack is located back here somewhere, the steering wheel is here. So the steering column must have to come down quite steeply, quite an extreme angle. So it's a little bit of an interesting solution. There's almost certainly going to be some universal joints going on at either end. That's normal, but they, the angles between them are quite extreme. So that's a big choice and relocating those steering components rearward in the chassis 
mean that the weight distribution has also been moved rearward because that's a big old heavy component moved back in the chassis that's taken weight and moved it rearwards overall in the car and let's not forget the weight distribution of formula one cars in the present era is pretty fixed i think there's only about eight or nine kilos of freedom front to rear and a lot of teams are struggling even to get into that window so mclaren have made a brave decision to take that route there's a few more development routes coming on with the car, but before we take a look at some of the upgrades the team has already put on the car, I think it's worth having another chat with Mike and Andrea Stella down in the pit lane at the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix to just try and find out what the McLaren master plan is for the rest of the year. In the short term over the coming races will be uh, minor, I would say minor adjustments on top of the launch specification and then within the first third of the season uh, we hope to be able to uh, bring trackside a major upgrade of the car which would uh, revisit most of the shapes that we can see now and add uh, some performance so we look forward to this um, major upgrade but in the meantime uh, all uh, men and women at McLaren are working hard to bring some more some other uh, minor upgrades that's absolutely fascinating to listen to and I think we can talk about the first elements of that master plan coming to fruition and you can see that a little bit more around the rear of the car. I've decided to take a look at the rear wing because this is an area that McLaren have been playing around with quite a lot and even at the Australian Grand Prix this weekend I've seen an extra wing tip design in the pit lane but as far as I can tell they haven't yet run it on the car Will they run it on the car? I'm not sure, but this is the section I'm talking about. Now, this is the wing from earlier in the season, and you can see these removable wing tips and that can bolt on from the upper element to the lower element, and a lot of teams have been playing around in this area, and McLaren is no exception. But look how this, out, this section is split. There's a, it's almost like a separate component that's bonded on, bolted on, to the end of the main section of the upper element of the wing. Well, this would be a route for McLaren to maybe save a little bit of money around the cost cap by introducing modular tips to the wing rather than a complete new rear wing. This is the wing they used in Saudi Arabia. And you can see here that the tips are again of a slightly different design, bonded to the outer element, but you can see the shape of it on the external section is different. But there you can see that cut in the outer section that will allow them to almost snip it off and put a different design on. And what I've seen in the pit garage in Melbourne and some pictures that have sneaked out on the internet is there's another design that McLaren have got, but they haven't actually put it on the car yet. But maybe it's an experimental part that they wanted to put through scrutineering and then they plan to run on the car later in the season. You do see a little bit of that. And also at the rear of the car, you can just see it here in this shot, introduced for the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix, a little bit of a brave decision, but it is a drag reducing decision. Only a single element lower beam wing being used in Saudi Arabia. Perhaps not a great surprise because a lot of teams want to cut drag on that high speed circuit. But at Melbourne, a similar design was experimented with by McLaren as well in free practice. Just this single element lower beam wing. And that's something that is a little bit surprising. Most teams will have an upper element in addition to that lower element. McLaren getting rid of from that upper element, saving a bit of weight, reducing a bit of drag, perhaps helping them with their top speed. Well, top speed was a problem for McLaren last season. It doesn't seem to be as, as big a problem for them this year, perhaps some hard work being done by Mercedes on that power unit. But we have seen that the McLaren has a big advantage over the works Mercedes team in high speed corners. Though I think that might be more down to an issue of the Mercedes than it is to an advantage with the McLaren. So what more are we gonna see out of this master plan? Well, I don't expect to see really big upgrades coming to many teams before we get into the European season because creating up new parts and loads of new bits and pieces and flying them to the other side of the world, that's a bit of a risk for any team. So it might not be until Imola or even later that we see the big major upgrades. And that's what worked so well for McLaren last season if they have that rate of development could they be the team to catch red bull once more we'll just have to wait and see until things get going later in the year